Okay, been a productive evening. Uh, still been long. I've been out here since uh, about five, so maybe two, two and a half hours, and uh, ran through a polar alignment uh, several times until I was happy. Um, I think I'm under uh, around uh, half a degree or less uh, on that, but I don't know how terribly repeatable it is, you know, because you have variance in where you point and so forth. So it's a good number. And now what I did is um, I played around with my tracking, uh, my auto guiding, so that uh, I got the movement of my uh, right ascension and uh, declination aligned to the movement of the, of the camera chip. And then I went in and I disabled the declination axis so that it's only controlling along right ascension. So what I'm simulating is the fact that uh, that when I use the Celestron uh, PEC uh, periodic uh, control tool. Uh, or period control tool, I think that's what it is. But it's it's uh, the algorithm that uh, if you play it to train your scope, you what you're trying to do is just use your right ascension control buttons, left, right, and keep your your star centered. Um, you know, and then it records those adjustments as it goes along. This line will move along this graph. It takes I don't know eight or nine minutes to complete. Um, but I did that with uh, the auto guide. Like I say, I turned off the declination axis and turned or left on the uh, right ascension. And as you can see, here here's the path. And so I had a couple outlayers in there, which uh, if I were doing this by hand, I, would, I probably uh, wouldn't be that accurate. So we're going to try it. Uh, the uh, declination graph was wandering all over, but uh, that doesn't matter because um, it was turned off. Uh, it seems to still display uh, the position of the star when it calculates. So uh, I found that uh, the aggressiveness I could dial back, and that would that would again tame this curve, so it wasn't overcorrecting so much. If I were to do it again, I might even go a little bit lower. But it's also probably a function of um, the seeing, you know, and how much the star dances around, you know. It's, if you go too small, maybe it won't correct enough. But I did that. It ran through its cycle. It says it's done. I clicked OK. And then I'm going to say um, upload data to mount. While that's doing that, uh, I mean, you would you would connect to your mount. Uh, my through COM4, uh, if it's a USB, it probably says something similar. Upload successful, great. And then you would uh, connect it. You would then uh, do a train, excuse me. Um, seek index, that's what I'm looking for. A seek index, and that'll uh, turn the uh, right ascension worm gear to where it knows where it is before you ever start. Then you would pick your star uh, with your auto guider, let it guide, get it floating like you see here, get, get your settings correct. I couldn't figure out with uh, PHD2 how to drive only one uh, axis. Not to say that it can't, I just didn't know how. So I gave up on that, came back to the Sky X and uh, did it the way I had knowledge for it. I'd have to read up on that to see if I could do it similarly with uh, PhD2. But uh, after it finds its index, you started your auto guiding. Uh, then you just hit train PEC, wait eight minutes, you know, if all goes well and it doesn't go wild on you during that period, um, then you're good. Now, I, I must think that my. Uh, 
polar alignment is doing pretty good because uh, if it wasn't this star, you know, even though it's being kept left to right in the center, it would drift down or drift up through time. And so I started at uh, 7, 17, I think. So that's 13, 14 minutes, and it's still pretty much, you know, near the middle. So, you know, I think my polar alignment is working well. So I think. I think I did good tonight. I got polar alignment. I got uh, periodic con uh, control training done, and uh, now I think I am effectively ready for the season. So, hallelujah. <laughs>